What's the most important skill every ethical hacker thinks they understand, but almost always skip? The one thing that separates a script kitty from a cybersecurity pro? It's not Python, not Kali Linux. And no, it's not Burp Suite or Metasploit either. It's networking, the invisible system that everything online runs on. Because if you don't understand how data moves, you'll never know how it gets manipulated or stolen. Let me tell you a true story. At a coffee shop in Amsterdam, a student sat quietly with his laptop. He connected to the cafe's free Wi-Fi. Within 15 minutes, he had intercepted every connection in the room. Not because he hacked into anyone's computer, but because he posed as the router. That's ARP spoofing. Nobody saw it coming. And nobody even knew it happened. Now let's back up and understand why that worked. Imagine the internet is a digital city. Each device is a house. Each website, a building, your IP address. That's your street number. But you can't go knocking directly. You send packets, little digital letters, and you need a postman, your router, to deliver them, to find any address. You check the DNS, like a phone book. It tells your browser where to go, and your data travels via TCP, IP, like mail carriers passing your envelope down the line. But that coffee shop incident, it's not unique. Let me tell you about a hotel hack that went completely unnoticed for weeks. A guest checked into a luxury hotel in Singapore, but this guest wasn't here for the minibar or the spa. He was there to quietly set up a rogue access point, a small device the size of a power adapter, plugged discreetly under a hallway table. It looked like part of the furniture, but it wasn't. It was a Wi-Fi pineapple, a tool that impersonates trusted networks. Every time a guest phone auto-connected to hotel guest Wi-Fi, they were actually connecting to him. Emails, intercepted, credentials, logged. Some guests even used the hotel business center to access company VPNs. All of it silently captured. Nobody suspected a thing because the hacker didn't break into any devices. He understood the flow of traffic and quietly rerouted it. Let's break down something you do every day. Visiting a website. You type youtube.com and hit enter. Here's what actually happens. Your device checks its DNS cache. If it doesn't know the address, it asks the DNS server, where is youtube.com? The DNS responds, here's the IP address. Then your computer starts a three-way TCP handshake. SYN, SYN, ek, ek. This is how connections begin. Your browser sends an HTTP GET request. The server responds with HTML, images, style sheets, each in their own packets. It all gets reassembled in your browser window. Now imagine if someone could intercept that DNS request or poison that handshake. Suddenly you're seeing what they want you to see. That's how man in the middle attacks work. Understanding that packet flow is what makes you a real ethical hacker. Let's talk about what hackers love the most. Human error in configs. Some of the most common vulnerabilities, routers with default usernames and passwords. Open ports exposing sensitive services like SSH or RDP. Flat networks, where everyone from interns to executives share the same access. IoT devices like smart TVs or security cams, unpatched and unmonitored, guest Wi-Fi with access to production environments, no firewall rules or access segmentation, one bad config, and an attacker is inside, pivoting across your systems. That's why knowing how to scan for these, with tools like Nmap, is so critical. Now let's understand how do enterprises defend themselves which is essential for you when you enter into a real world of defending as a blue team member. They use firewalls to block unwanted traffic, network segmentation to isolate sensitive systems, access control lists to define who can talk to what, intrusion detection and prevention systems to flag anomalies, and zero trust policies, assuming every user and device is a potential threat. But red teamers, professional hackers, know how to slip through the cracks. They compromise a printer, move laterally to a database, and escalate privileges, all because a network wasn't properly segmented or monitored. The blueprint of the network is where the real game is played. And if you can read it, you control the board. DNS spoofing tricks you into visiting fake websites that look real. ARP spoofing lets an attacker reroute traffic through themselves without anyone noticing. Max spoofing? That's like walking into a building using someone else's ID. These attacks work not because of poor passwords, but because of blind spots in the network. Most beginners rush to run flashy tools they saw in a tutorial. They run scans they don't understand. And the moment something breaks, they freeze. 
because they never learned what's happening underneath. Real hackers don't guess. They observe the flow and understand it. So here's where to begin. Set up your own virtual lab. Use VirtualBox or VMware, run two machines, install Wireshark, run Nmap from one and observe traffic on the other. Simulate a ping scan, spoof a MAC address, capture DNS queries. You won't just watch tutorials anymore, you'll build instincts. Networking is where real hacking begins. In the next video, I'll walk you through setting up your own virtual lab, step by step, so you can simulate real traffic, test safely, and build real skills. And don't forget to subscribe if you're serious about mastering cybersecurity from the ground up, because the best ethical hackers aren't the ones with the flashiest tools. They're the ones who understand how everything moves.